Well, hey, welcome to another capture uh, with Paul Scanlon. And, uh, you know, we've done, this is our fourth one now. Uh, talked about self-awareness, um, talked to young professionals in particular, and uh, about communication. And on this one, we're going to talk about excellence. Uh, so excited to be here again today, Paul, with you and Great. touch on this topic. Good to see you, Tom. Yeah. Excellence. Um, so let's start with um, what is excellence to you? Uh, to me, excellence is doing the best that you can with what you have. And I, I, say that, I say that because instantly when you mention excellence, especially again in the voluntary sector, in mm. the charitable sector, in the church sector, I think we think excellence means money and extravagance and opulence. So it is a good place to start for mm. us to define the word. So excellence is really as simple as that to me. It's doing the best that you can with what you've got. And I think it's a good start point for our conversation because you'd be surprised how, how few people do the best that they can sure. with what they've got, assuming they can't do better till they have more. So the belief becomes about excellence. I can't, we can't do this well. We can't do this excellently until we have these people or that budget or that equipment or that opportunity or we're at this stage of development. Mm. And that's not understanding excellence. That is, that is more thinking excellence is to do with something that looks a certain way, sounds a certain way, um, because you've seen someone else do it that way. Got you. And I think excellence becomes uh, a pressure and becomes a misnomer when we compare our, our chapter one to someone's chapter 10, mm. as it were, mm. in terms of the excellence scale. So we think excellence is something we saw on Oprah, right. and then we try to produce it, and Oprah has a champagne budget, and we have a Coca-Cola budget mm. with champagne tastes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if you have a Coca-Cola budget, then you do the best that you right. can within that. To me, that would be an excellent thing that you did, because you did the best that you could with what you have. I have, I have uh, eaten meals in mud huts in Africa. Hmm. And it was an excellent experience. Wow. Because the people had nothing compared to the West, but they did the best that they could with what they had. And I knew the moment I stepped into that hut, it was like they treated us like kings, and it was all they had, and it was the best that they had. That to me was an excellent meal, uh, as excellent as anything in a high-end, expensive restaurant wow. in the West. To me, it wasn't, one was excellence, one wasn't. They were both excellent. Hmm. So I, I think that's a good uh, definition to hold throughout this conversation. That, sure. is, that is what we're saying excellence is, doing hmm. the best that you can with what you've got. Great. And then, you know, talking about your story, where, where did all this start for you? You know, if it, if it at some point became, let's say, an issue, when was that? Well, it wasn't in my working class background, that's for sure, because I think back to my working class background, as would be true for many people watching, and it's not, that is not a good background to school us in or give us a desire for or even an awareness of something called excellence. But I think growing up in the church world and certainly coming into full-time ministry 30 plus years ago, I, I think I realized that uh, traveling around um, the church and the voluntary sector in this country, I realized that um, excellence was sadly lacking and then that word became more common in my vocabulary back then. Mm. But I felt that we were not seeing the value of it. We were not operating in excellence. We were not doing the best that we could with what we had. Right. I want to come back to that and say, I wasn't going around the country or looking for anything opulent or extravagant. I don't mean that. I just felt that even simple things mm. were just not done well, never mind excellently. Mm. So the word excellence became much more a part of my vocabulary. You know, I would think uh, 20 plus years ago when I realized that my experience with the church in this country and around the world was anything but right. excellent, anything but doing the best that we could with what we had. And uh, I didn't talk about it because I felt I didn't want to come across ungrateful or a diva or an ego or uh, demanding or ungrateful 
for all the reasons why we don't talk about this, certainly in the church world. But then I think about 20 years ago, um, I began to become more serious about speaking about it. I got a bit of a reputation for speaking about it, got asked to speak about it, but I mm. don't know that it went down well mm. or that people felt in the grand scheme of things when so many people are suffering, so much poverty and trouble and difficulty in the world, even more so now than then perhaps, mm. that that should be something we should waste people's time talking about, is the vibe I felt yeah. in the room whenever I spoke about excellence. Yeah. So, <coughs> you know, I guess once you started to communicate about it and I'm sure I'm sure you had a lot of feedback and questions and conversations um, which is things I think I'm hearing as we we talk about it stuff that I think people would say of excellence is you know where do you draw the line between excellence and perfectionism and, and really what's the difference between those two well to me the difference is perfectionism is is attempting something questing for something um, desiring something that <laughs> that Again, it's something that you have seen someone else do or you have convinced yourself without that you cannot, you cannot say it was done well. Mm. Perfectionism is this refusal to allow for growth. It's the refusal to embrace the stage you're at. It's the refusal to enjoy the journey, to mm. appreciate average. Mm -hmm. um, and that sometimes average is the best that you can do and that's fine because it's the best that you can do with what you have, sure. as we said earlier. Perfectionism is this unrealistic belief of an outcome that uh, is not possible. It is unreasonable for you to ask it of you or of the people involved. Perfectionism uh, is this finicky, nitpicky, never satisfied thing that is in us. It is a flawed belief system, I think, perfectionism. So these two things are very different it's mm. worth separating them out i guess but that is not that is not again what what we're talking about we're talking about something far more accessible and practical and down to earth mm. that everybody watching us and listening to us can can start today you can start today to be excellent in something you can't start today to be perfect in anything you. but you can start right now to become ex to become to become excellent and commit to excellence in any small thing you do today, any mm. habit of life, any regular routine, today can be given the excellent treatment, which mm. is do the best that you can right. with what you have. So I think those two things are worlds apart. And our discussion today, this capture, is nothing to do with perfectionism. So the perfectionists listening, mm. I think, probably need to hear us say that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, um, you know, I guess, is, is there a is there potentially a danger of, a, of an attitude of excellence, excellence developing, if not cultivated well in <coughs> And obviously, therefore, I suppose, stunting us from any growth or movement. I think the value of excellence that we're talking about, and it was a value that I decided to place central to what we were doing in our church mm. and in our operation, I think once you've dis uh, described and, and identified the value of excellence, yeah. you have to define it, which we just did. Mm -hmm. And then for that to become the culture, um, it has to then be in keeping with what we defined it to be. So I didn't define va excellence as do the best that you can with what you've got, and then try and have a culture of got opulence you. or perfectionism or beating ourselves up because it wasn't as good as someone else mm -hmm. down the road or someone else that did the same thing as us. So identifying the value of excellence, which I think we should all do for all of our lives, or sure. certainly for what we're doing in our organizations, in our churches, charities, businesses, and teams, then the practicalities of that become very doable. I didn't want to let excellence by default become in people's minds or what we really mean is. Mm. And, and that perfectionism starts creeping in. Yeah. And people start getting over critical and over demanding and over nitpicky. <coughs> so I think in the first year, when excellence was a new value in our organization, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time saying, no, no, that was excellent. No, Got no, I, I didn't mean that, we don't mean that. No, let's not be critical about that. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it was excellent, given those things that were weaknesses in it, given those things that were probably fails in the way we did it, sure. I think it was still the best we could have done. Right. So I spent a, a good year making sure that the culture of excellence was that. It wasn't excellence is the value, mm. but we're really trying to be something else in our culture 
that is more leaning towards perfectionism. Mm. I kept having to keep that balance until I think we got it mm. in, in our team and in our organization. So really that, you know, the culture, it has to be in keeping with your definition of what yes. excellence is. <coughs> yeah, the culture being behavior mm. and, and, and value being belief. Got you. I believe in excellence. Therefore, the culture of excellence practically looks like doing the best that we can with what we've got. Mm. And uh, that is not a small level. It's not a, it's not a small, weak standard because I realized once we chose excellence as a value, mm. how many things we were not doing well, mm. how many things were just um, not the best that we could do with the resources that we had. So I don't want people listening to us to think that excellence is some kind of low bar that's just above average. Sure. It's not because I think if everybody listening to us today decided to do one thing uh, excellently, i.e., I'm going to do this today. I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make this phone call. I'm going to do this job. I've got to do. I'm going to do this household chore. I'm going to respond to this question I've been asked. I'm going to do whatever. Just anything today that they would pick, if they would say, okay, I'm going to do this better than I've ever done it. Yeah. I think that's where people will realize what we're talking about is not easy. This yeah. is not easy. Our language sounds, makes excellence sound common. Mm. And of course, that's what we want it to be. Mm -hmm. But if this conversation began with opulence and perfectionism, we've already lost 90% of our audience. Yeah. And that is not what we're looking for. So we're looking for everybody do the best that you can yeah, yeah. with what you've got. And start with one thing today. You're going to find out this isn't as easy as you think it is as we sat here. Because I, in our organization, uh, make, making a thing excellent was, was a nightmare. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. <coughs> I'm interested. I, don't, I hope you don't mind me staying here for a second. But just, you know, in your journey of developing that value of excellence, um, <coughs> how long did that take? In, in terms of reinforcing a culture before you said, I think we've got it? I think it took 12 months of intense um, discussions at all levels with, with the core team, with the staff, with the key volunteers. Mm -hmm. I think it was a year of, of um, in, our, in our all organization now, there internally for a year, I would think it was a year of intensely um, speaking about celebrating, reinforcing right. uh, in our minds, in our behavior, that value. Mm. Uh, having said that, we never, I suppose, relaxed from it in the following years. It was just more mainstream, I think, after a year. Mm. But every new person that came, every new staff member, every new volunteer that was not part of that first year, where we embedded it as a, as a value and a culture, had to be brought up to speed. Yeah. And so when new people came, and even though they knew that was a value, but did not do a thing excellently, it was like starting all over again. The only difference was that I had more people that were carrying that excellence than just me. Mm. So it didn't need me to go around policing it yeah. as I did in the first year, because it was primarily me bringing that value in. Others caught it effortlessly, others never caught it. Yeah. But the ones that were infected with it early on, as it were, and got the virus, yeah. became my partners and supporters in spreading it. Sure. And so following that first year of intense effort from me, it became easier uh, to get it throughout the organization because more people had caught it. Mm. Then I began to speak about it around the country and the world. Um, but I, I was glad it came that way because I had, I had my own laboratory mm. in our own organization right. where I had pioneered um, whether it was possible. And remember now, we were doing what we were doing uh, in a church in the north of England, in a working class mm. part of the country. We had no corporate leverage to get excellence because these are volunteers, sure. by and large. And I think uh, that was a great learning curve for me. And I think it gave me a great basis from which to speak about it around the world because I had taken several years to see whether or not we could make it mainstream culture in our church. Got you. So I guess really what we're saying to people too is that it isn't something you'll do for 12 months and then great, you've got it, move on. 
this is a continued thing in your life that you approach life with a, a spirit and a value of excellence. You get more excellent at being excellent. Mm. You do, and I think that's what we're supposed to do. Um, I, I, even though now, for us in our organization, and many people listening will identify with their beginnings and where they're at now, um, you just got to get more excellent at every level. The challenge of that is that with growth comes complexity and you get more spread out and more layers of leadership and management and products and options um, and maybe multi-location. So, so excellence gets more difficult to roll out the more spread out your organization gets, the more diverse your staffing, the more diverse the combination of people involved, um, the more complex. Everything that we do gets more complex the more we grow. That's true of a family or a relationship or a team or a business. And so excellence becomes, it's the value in whatever we do, wherever we go, but I don't think we can assume that just because we opened a branch there, um, no more than Starbucks. Mm. Um, when Starbucks open a new franchise somewhere, or McDonald's, or any of these franchise-based organizations and businesses, they know it's not just about serving the product. They know mm. it has to be done according to their cultural standards. Mm. So Starbucks have people, all these franchises have people that are not just switched on with the systems, but they are cultural engineers that go into every franchise making sure this is the Starbucks experience. Mm. It's not just here's your coffee. Yeah. And that's where it gets more difficult and that's more exhausting. It is simple to put a system in. Mm. It is not simple to put a culture in. Right. And I think what our challenge is as we grow organizationally is that. Mm. It's that I want to make sure that this value, this culture is as much there as it is at the first place where we started it. Mm. That's the challenge. Wow. And that makes it, uh, I guess, the next level of, of really, you know, developing excellence is, is when you start spreading out and, and opening, like you said, other branches or uh, replicating a business or a charity. Because people are not really, you know, whatever people that are listening to us today, whatever they're into, whatever they're selling, whatever they're producing, whatever they're generating, people are not following us or trading with us or partnering with us or buying from us because of the product. Mm. There are other people that sell what you sell and do what you do. Um, they are they are supporting us and attached to us, I think, because of the experience they are having right. whilst they're trading with us. Mm. This is why all of us have certain brand loyalties. We'd rather go and have our food there and buy our groceries there. We'd rather have our coffee there than there. We'd rather go to um, that movie house than the other movie house. We'd rather... You know, whatever, whatever our preferences are, at the root of those preferences are really not the product, the commodity. Mm. It's the way that the people handle that. It's the experience we have while we're there. Right. So therefore, culture becomes more important than the value because the culture is your experience of that value. Mm. So I can say it's excellent, but if your experience is shoddy and poor and, and, and not excellent, um, then you're not going to come back. Mm. Even though the product was still good, your experience was not good. Right. I suppose <coughs> culture, we could spend probably another 20 minutes altogether just on culture. Um, we're talking about excellence, like you mentioned in the grand scheme of things and a lot of things that are going on around the world. Um, let's say, why does this matter? Why, why does excellence matter, considering everything that you know, we're facing in the world today? Well, I think, it mat I think excellence is a quality of life issue. It's not a, it's not a dotting I's and crossing T's issue. Right. Excellence is not an organizational benefit. Uh, it is that. But to me, excellence is a lifestyle benefit. To do, to do the best that you can with what you've got across your life has got to enhance the quality of your life and everybody else's life mm. that, is, that is benefiting from or not benefiting from the way you do a thing. Mm. Um, and so uh, timekeeping... Uh, being reliable, um, doing what you said you do when you do it, doing it well. I mean, all of that uh, is the basics of all of our everyday lives. So excellence matters for that reason. But it matters also because to become outstanding at what we do, to become the best at what we do, to have a wider influence than the small influence we have now, to have more customers, to have more support, to have more volunteers, 
to have a larger voice, to have a larger footprint and impact. All of that that anybody listening to us is aspiring to um, is going to require excellence. Mm. You cannot possibly fulfill that dream that you have to make this small thing a big thing mm. or to take this product global or to have this voice to go around the world. Um, you can't possibly achieve that without excellence. Right. It's just not going to happen. That's why this matters so much mm. because we, we live in a world where people believe that they can have an idea and rely on it going viral. Mm. So it requires no work and no excellence right. and no cultural investment because I'm just going to hit the big time mm. because someone else did. This breeds laziness and right. carelessness and let's just see what happens into our culture. And I don't think that is uh, a, a, a default mode to relax into. Sure. So I realized that for our organization, for our church to, to become significant, to have influence, to reach thousands of people, excellence, doing things well, having great systems, having great culture um, in everything that we did was a non-negotiable because just dealing with, many people listening to us know, just, just with an average size family gathering, it's a disaster. Mm. <laughs> Getting everything coordinated mm. and working on time and everybody having a good experience is exhausting. Right. Imagine wanting to do that thing that you did for 10 people that killed you and stretch it to the limit. Imagine wanting to do that to thousands of people mm. or millions around the world. It's, n it's not an option. You, you, it, it's like I say in other things I talk about, uh, I have this um, on, on my Wisdom for Life teachings that I do. I say it's hard to change the world when you can't find your keys. Right. My point being, there's a definite correlation between those two things. I want to change the world. Yeah, but why don't you start with showing up on time? Got you. Why don't you be more reliable? Why don't you be a team player? Why don't you deal with your attitude? Why don't you stop being so disagreeable? Um, why don't you stop being so negative and glass half empty? Blah, blah, blah. Those things matter to taking the world. Mm. And my metaphor for that is, if you can't find your keys, forget taking on the world with your big idea. Yeah. That's why it matters. Got you. And really, this is, this is something that lands for everyone, whether you're, you know, you're a stay-at-home mum that's looking to start a business or you're a CEO of an organisation. There's always a starting point today for taking on a culture and a, a, a mindset of excellence. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I, I think so, and I'm hoping that our listeners and our watchers will see the value of this because I think people will be thinking, well, you know what, there's, there's global terrorism, there, mm. are, there, there, there are global natural disasters, there are, the, the world is divided, the world is dangerous, the world is fearful. Are you guys, is all you guys going to talk about is excellence? Sure. I think, I think the danger in a troubled world is a lot of this stuff. Uh, goes by the wayside and right. gets pushed aside as not important. Mm. Um, and so all of this, we get fearful of talking about it because it's not in the grand scheme of things huge. But there are many people listening to, as the millions around the world, that we need what you're doing to become global mm. because the world won't get better without your brilliant idea. Yeah. And so we, we're saying in the midst of this, the global trauma that we're in, in the midst of that, we're saying to people, those that have ears to hear, we're saying to you, mm. we want you to aspire to do something amazing politically and corporately and in the church. We want you to do something amazing. So you are going to be listening to us outside of the global tragedies and thinking, okay, yeah, I am. And I'm not going to think that my thing doesn't matter because sure. we're telling you it does. Mm. And we're telling you in the midst of things that are much bigger issues, this issue is going to become vital for you to get to where you're going in the next 10, 20 years. With so you. we're really talking to people that see the value of this mm. and don't think that's nonsense in the scheme of things because uh, that's never going to be true about something as foundational as excellence. Mm. Got you. Well, I know you've um, you know, particularly forged out um, in your setting, particularly in the church world, the journey of, of making things more excellent and, um, and approaching what the church world does with, with the more excellent spirit. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what that looks like for you? Yeah, I, I, we, we both know, everybody knows excellence is a much wider issue than just the church. And, and I think, you know, we've said that in our capture, 
But I do want to say to my church family around the world that we, ha we have got to lift our game. Mm. Um, I think in this last few years, well, not just the last few years, but over the years, but this last few years more so, I've traveled a lot mm. around the world. Um, and I want to say that um, in the church world, I do think that excellence has been the Cinderella of our church cultures. This, the, the excellence has been shoved below stairs and the two ugly sisters of it'll do and good enough hmm. are running the church. Right. You know, it'll do, it's good enough, oh, it's okay. They, they did the best that they could. The, the people did the best they could. Meaning their volunteers give them a break is what's implicit in that comment of they did the best they could and we're doing the best they can. And you know, these people came, give up their time and they got to go to work tomorrow and you know, we can't be too hard on them. and. And all of that implicitly was, hey, uh, back off. Mm. Um, and so it'll do became the norm and good enough became the norm. Those two ugly sisters were running the house, were running the organization. So to bring Cinderella from below stairs and to reveal her in all her glory, as it were, was a massive uphill struggle mm. inside the church because of religion Religion uh, and excellence do not go together because religion believes uh, that to be excellence is worldly and corporate and professional and that's not what the church is about. So religion certainly will not help us to achieve excellence. Uh, not only does religion um, not understand the need for excellence and devalue it and will be resistant to it with its own agenda, mm. um, and poverty and lack mentality, which religion has. But um, I, I think in the church generally, we wouldn't see excellence as an important thing in the grand scheme of things that the church should speak about. Okay. But um, it comes down to things like not replying to an email. Hmm. How hard can that be? And it, it used to drive me crazy and my staff when they would email someone and then there'd be no reply for weeks. So you didn't know whether or not you should go back and say, did you get my email? Mm. Which feels like you've been pushy or you're pressing them for an answer because you weren't sure whether the email landed or not. And I used to teach all my staff that were involved in that level of correspondence. If you have an email that comes and you can't answer it now, acknowledge the email. Mm. Go back and say, we got your email. We can't respond right now. We're not sure right now about the answer to that, mm. but we'll get back to you within right. a few days or a week. Or the person that knows that is on vacation and will find out in a couple of weeks, acknowledge the email. But to not acknowledge the email means that you're left in this limbo um, of did they get it or not? So the whole email, the whole correspondence thing, absence of mm. doing the best that you can with that email. Wow. Doing the best that you can acknowledges it, to me, mm. anyway. So that became, even when I taught my staff to do that, people would say around the world, your staff are amazing. I said, why are my staff amazing? You've never met them. <laughs> You've never been to our church. Well, you know, we, we, just emailing them is awesome. Wow. And I think, yeah, exactly. Mm. If it just stopped there, it would have been excellent for them in their experience of dealing with our staff. Just a simple thing like that doing the best that you can with an email. Mm. What is the best that we can do? What is the worst that we can do with an email? Let's even forget going beyond that. Let's just deal with correspondence. But still now, 30 plus years later, <laughs> it is still not uncommon at all for churches around the world wow. to not acknowledge emails, not respond to emails, and then get back to you weeks later, um, like, like they just got the email on that day and they've had it all along. I think timekeeping, airport pickups, airport drop-offs, um, again, how hard can that be? Mm. <laughs> but it seems to be Apparently. a challenge around the world. Um, coming with a car that's too small to get luggage in. Mm. If people are traveling internationally, even people that are not doing this for a living, even people that are not on staff and involved in hospitality in any professional way would know, we, you know, we can't take the mini to pick up people that are traveling sure. internationally with bags and there's two people arriving with international luggage. All of that, you think, really? Do we mm. really need to be still talking about this? 
and my experience tells me wow. we do still need to be talking about it. Mm. Therefore, to me, excellence is still the Cinderella, it seems to me, of church life around the world. It still seems to me, and there are exceptions to this, okay? There are exceptions where there are some churches and some tribes of churches that have got this nailed. But they are too exceptional for us to assume it's anywhere near mainstream. Sure. So we still have to talk about it. Mm. And I think still, by and large, for 90%, I would say, 90% of the church around the world is still got Cinderella well and truly below stairs, mm. and it'll do and good enough are running the organization. And I want to say it matters. Sure. It absolutely matters. It doesn't just matter to, to, to me, and, I, and this is the danger I have, in saying, well, he, he just wants to be you know, met at the airport with you know, the mm. red carpet. It's just nothing to do with that. And mm. I, I've got too many years in the bank to even try and prove anything on that part, that mm. I'm some kind of diva. Um, I just think uh, my experience in traveling widely, I want to say to pastors and leaders all around the world, this really matters. Mm. And if you don't think it matters, then I want you to know your growth and your influence um, and your increase and your opportunity and your potential is all severely hindered. Mm. Because if you can't organize an airport pickup or a hotel um, or an event or an administration of something as basic and as simple as that, um, then you shouldn't even be aspiring to anything beyond the level you are at. You. And you can't do it without excellence, not as a value. Anybody can say we believe in excellence. If you Google any organization, that will be somewhere in the mm. list of values. But having it as a value is easy. Making it the behavior in your organization is not. And I travel widely, and I go into many, many organizations and churches for whom this would be like a wasted conversation. Oh, of course we, sure. we believe in excellence, of course we do. We've got so-and-so in charge of hospitality. Yeah, and they're terrible at it. Mm. Why in the world did you pick them for that job? Aren't you involved in your own hospitality and the answer is usually we're not. I don't know what it's like to be picked up at the airport if I've never been picked up at the airport by your church. Sure. I just assume it's going well. And when you didn't do it well, and I'm your boss and say, how did it go? You're gonna tell me it was great, even mm. though it wasn't. So I just assume it's going great because I don't have any way of finding out how well are we doing things. Mm. And so secret shopping of how excellent you are becomes an option. Send right. people in to secretly sass out. I used to telephone my own church about three times a year, I'd telephone my own receptionist and put on an accent <laughs> and pretend to be an awkward caller just to try and find out how patient, how kind, how helpful are they? Because you never telephone your own business. Sure. So you don't know what it's like to be a customer buying from you because you right. don't buy from you. Mm. You, don't, you don't trade with you. You don't attend your event. You are involved in your event. And if you're involved, you can't know what it's like to be coming wow. as a member of the public mm. or as a shopper or as a customer. So you have to find a way to get in the shoes of the people that are the consumers of your excellence to know if it is excellence. Mm. So yeah, I, I still want to say around the world, come on church, we've got to hugely lift our game yeah. and it absolutely matters to everything that you have in your heart to do for God in your generation, in your community. You cannot do it and you shouldn't be allowed to do it mm. if you're not going to do it excellently. <laughs> Well, I certainly, obviously, feel um, feel challenged to to you know look at my daily life, the stuff I'm facing, and to to do it with a little more excellence and to approach it with that attitude of well, what can I do sure. with what I have, and right. I'm going to do the best. Cool. So, super helpful and right. thankful for your wisdom Great. and insight on it. Welcome. Thanks very much. Uh,